Hey now, welcome to the Dirty Side of the Track, America's leading Formula One podcast. I'm Sap, that's Rob. We're here for you. We got one week left until cars are on track. How excited are you, Rob? I'm super excited um, and looking forward to kind of getting through some of the topics today because everything we're going to cover is just putting us like one step closer to it all starting. We've got a bit of a uh, action-packed episode today. We're going to do our normal kind of news and social roundup. And then we're going to segue into previewing Bahrain. Then we're going to get on everyone's back about fantasy and why it's so amazing and why you need to join us in the Dirty Side League. And then finally, uh, another installment of 100 Seconds, uh, which is really looking forward to that as well. So, yeah, it's a lot to get through today, Brian. I'm excited. And I would say definitely pay attention for the fantasy as we are giving out prizes. I knew you'd like that. I just glad you got the buttons the right way around this week. <laughs> oh, I'll make more mistakes. Just wait. <laughs> so one of the things that we talked about, and it's obviously big in the news, we have to kind of hit some of the, the continued uh, fallout uh, with Russia. And so, you know, we, we try to avoid any geopolitical topics, the dirty side of the track. We avoid religion. We avoid anything that could be um, controversial except for Max versus Lewis. And so as we look at it, you know, it is unfortunate that the, the race in Russia was not just suspended. Now it's been dropped from the calendar. Um, I've actually seen a couple of interesting tweets from people who work on the pit lanes uh, uh, saying maybe let's keep it at 22 because of the way some of the back to backs are structured. Uh, last week on this very podcast, I made the suggestion we could replace it and add another 24 would be great. I, I think we could move to 25. I'd actually say if we did 26 every other week year round um, would be the optimal amount of F1 races for me as a fan. But uh, I guess we'll just find out what they end up doing now that we're at 22, if they replace it, if it falls at the same time, uh, and what happens. And then, uh, as well, with some of the, the challenges, Nikita Mazepin is no longer with Haas. And we all kind of saw how that came down. I mean, Rob, what are your thoughts with some of the changes, both to the calendar, but also the Haas driver lineup? Um. Yeah, let's get let's get kind of the downside of it out of the way first, and then we can go back to the silly stuff about the tracks I want to see replace it. But um, Mazepin, it was you could just see it coming. Um, I'd seen the news break, I think, on Thursday that the FIA had offered in this document to sign, which I just thought was the most kind of I don't know pointless. Oh, we're going to make you sign a bit of paper that says you'll never say anything bad about anything. And then you're going to be allowed to race under a neutral flag. It's like that was they had splinters right up their asshole on that one. But from sitting on the fence because. And then has just took the decision out of their hands and went, well, we're sacking him. We're severing all ties with the sponsorship deal and with uh, anything to do with uh, Russia. And I thought, well, fair play has because. I don't really know what was the point of the piece of paper. That, so, so what? Mazepin signs a, a letter with the FIA that says, I promise not to show any kind of allegiance to Russia and I'll be good. I mean, that just seems like I'll get my homework, miss. I mean, to me, I think it just came down at the end of the day. And this is, this is a hard one, right? I mean, Nikita Mazepin didn't ask for this war. He's no, just he's a citizen. Nothing wrong, really. Right, exactly. So we all know that. But when he's a paid driver and you're no longer repping your all colleague, and you're no longer effectively a paid driver. I think that in my mind is where all of the the dominoes happened and everything around it, the documents, the conversation was just theater. And so for me, it came down to him being a paid driver and losing the paid part of it. So I don't know, that's kind of the way I saw it. And and there are a lot of names flying around. Um, There are, as I mentioned during our Schumacher episode, Oscar Piastri, and actually our 100 seconds of DRS guest this week, we spent some time hanging out with after uh, the recording. Um, and it was just fascinating to hear his perspective on Piastri. So I think that's an option. We have uh, Antonio uh, Giovinazzi has been linked. Happy, happy. I mean, we've had a conversation about. Yeah. Nico Huckenberg coming back. Uh, Daniel, thank you for recording that. Um, and, and then there have been a few other drivers kind of linked to the seat. Uh, obviously, Fittipaldi, I think, is is in the conversation very strong. They Haas tweeted a picture getting ready for Bahrain, yeah. and it was Fittipaldi in the car. Yeah. So I don't know, you know, how much conspiracy theories we want to go into. I'd like to limit the amount of them personally, but uh, you know, it's going to be fascinating to kind of see what what Haas comes up with, um, and and how much we know and how soon. So I did like these um, 
I can't remember, it might have been WTF1 on uh, an Instagram did a, um, will have Fittipaldi, Schumacher and Verstappen on track again together and then showed a picture of Michael Yoss. <laughs> and uh, it was it was awesome. It was like, okay, that's a blast from the past. Um, and they said, and if Fittipaldi comes in and he is backed by Bank of Brazil, then um, if the livery was to kind of reflect the previous sponsor, will we see kind of like uh, Brazilian bright yellow and almost have like a Jordan back on the... Uh, <laughs> on the grid again that would be awesome someone mocked it up as well i mean you can get these um i can't i don't know how to do it but you can uh, you see a lot of these ones now where you get those free 3d models that they use in like say the racing games and they just put them out there and make them available for people and people are mocking up their own liveries like there was a few this week with like both nfl and uh, premier league uh, football teams what they would look like if they were uh, liveries on a car pretty cool that's super so, cool yeah, um but just before we finish on this one i saw another one that said hmm so we've got a white car that has no sponsors now um, that might be struggling to survive going into a year of brand new regulations. Anyone getting a feeling of deja vu around Braun GP? <laughs> Only if Paul's driving the truck, the hash truck, all the way to the first, uh, the testing this coming week. But I'm um, just going back to the, to the track. There was like, um, I think, Sepang, Portugal... What else had I seen thrown out there as uh, contenders? Uh, just using one of the ones that's already on the circuit and repeating it again like they did with Austria. I wasn't a big fan of doing the, the two same venue back to back. I do like Sepang. That would be pretty cool to throw in. But then I started thinking, um, you know, just stupidly, uh, throw the Top Gear track in. Let's, uh, let's <laughs> have the... <laughs> <laughs> and then that got my brain thinking to other tracks where the best track I, I ever really remember uh, virtually racing on, it doesn't, it doesn't exist and I don't think they'd be able to build it in time, but it was Grand Valley Speedway from the original Gran Turismo game. Oh, that'd be epic. Hey, if they could put together the Saudi Arabia track in like two weeks before the race happened, then I think they could make Grand Valley. I'd like to see the, <laughs> the Ridge Racer track from the original arcade, the novice one. Um, that uh, That is a heck of a track. So yeah, it'll be cool. It'll be kind of exciting to see you know, what they do race-wise and what Haas does driver-wise in the next uh, couple weeks. Yeah, yeah. Um, and on driver uh, driver side of things, then uh, Max Verstappen has now um, signed a contract until the end of eternity. Um, I, I don't really remember seeing a contract go out this far. Feels a very long contract to have been given out. And um, I was looking into the details of it and they said it's the most lucrative deal in F1 history, rumoured to be, um, I'll go dollars because it sounds bigger and better, 43 million to 55 million dollars a year. a year. I mean, that's a lot of money. That is, I mean, start, I know we, I guess we could do some, some breakdown on that one day, but if it's, let's say it's 55 million a year. Okay. How many races are there a year? 23. 23. Well, or maybe 22. And I bet he yeah. doesn't get a pay decrease. if there's So one we're, over, uh... we're over $2 million a race for Max to do that. So every race is over 2 million bucks, right? So even if it's 46, we're exactly $2 million, uh, which is in that range. And how long does a race take? An hour and a half for $2 million? <laughs> and I, I recognize the your training and the practices and quality and all the other things that happen. But just think about it. Next time you watch a race and Max is going around, just the meter should be going. You know, every time he does a lap, you know, like two hundred thousand dollars exactly. <laughs> so, uh, and I know that's not a per lap, but anyway, it's uh, it'll be kind of fun to see see how uh, he does in the coming years and how Red Bull does. I mean, I, I think they'll be in the top, you know, four constructors as we talked about this coming year. But um, you know, I'm I'm optimistic it'll be uh, maybe upside down a little. Yeah, we'll see. And on the subject of upside down, um, a team trying to break its way into that upper echelons is uh, Aston Martin with the livery that we know makes uh, Brian uh, have special feelings. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> if, the, if the Aston Martin car had that V10 that we played the other day, oh, boy. <laughs> anyway, best team, best team principal name on the grid, Mike Crack. As, Mike um, Crack has said that their plan to be title contenders by 2025 is on target. I mean, that's a big claim, being as they haven't even raced a single lap yet under his uh, um, supervision. But you, why not? Go big or go home, right? Well, but to be fair, uh, if we're doing this in a straight line approach, 2025 to contend for a title, it's 2022. 
I mean, they just have to be on the grid effectively at this point to, <laughs> to be to be on course for 2025. So pay, paging, oh, attention Walmart shoppers, paging might crack, paging might crack. You're on target. So, I mean, he's he's talking it up big style. It's just nice to hear a team is actively. I know they're all trying to win it, but we also know that all of them are just trying to survive and just trying to not be last because they're pretty much most of them are just thinking, well, it's Mercedes or Red Bull every year. Um, but no, he was he was really talking up the game. The only um, the only bit. I don't know if it's a downside, but I pick your brains now, Brian. Is then Vettel came out and they were asking him what it's like to drive the new car, and he kind of took a big intake of breath and went there is a steep learning curve on these new cars. It's not just, you know, everyone's talking about the air that's coming off the back and whether you're going to be able to follow. That's just a piece of it. You forget about, you know, the guys that are sitting inside these new things and having to learn how to take them around the track. And it got me thinking, um, and I'd be interested to see what you think on this. Does it level the field? And now the youngsters that are like going up against these experienced drivers don't need to catch up as much because everyone now gets a, a blank canvas, so to speak. And um, therefore, um, Vettel and co, the older, sta- the older statesmen are not as advantaged or does their experience on been there, done that can drive the wheels off anything. Does that make it more likely that we might see Vettel, Alonso and some of the elder statesmen maybe uh, take a bit more of a run at podium positions? I can't, I keep managing to kind of argue that one back and forward both ways. Yeah, me too. You know, that's a great question. Um, so I'll give you my answer. I actually think it helps the youngsters. I think there's a muscle memory aspect for the veteran drivers and having to relearn something after doing it, or, you know, not saying it's been the same, but having to relearn something new after years of getting used to other things. I think as it gets older, it gets a little harder. I hate to say that. I hate to be the old man in the room, get off my lawn, <laughs> but, you know, I have to use, my kids have to show me how to do some of the new Instagram filters and things. It's, it's not easy getting old. And so I would think it levels the field more, gives the youngsters a boost. Um, And I think one of the challenges for Seb in particular will be whether he has hair or no hair, whether he's bald or got the floppy mopperson, as I call it. All my daughter's friends in high school have the floppy mopperson going. And um, if he has all that extra hair, it's going to be harder to see. So if he comes in (laughs) bald, he'll be faster, easier to go, and then he has a better chance. But I guess we'll find out. I mean, as I was wrestling with this question, that was one aspect I, I didn't take into consideration, Brian. Yeah, so that's yeah. why you're here, right? That's why you're paid the big bucks to bring those kind of insights to the pod. I mean, everybody is either an Elon Musk fanboy or they kind of look at Tesla with a little bit of a question mark. No one ever talks about the fact he was bald <laughs> at PayPal. Elon Musk was B-A-L-D bald at PayPal. And now he has like hair. So, OK, all right. I guess that's how that works. I don't care. I, I don't take him or leave him one way or the other. I love the stuff he's doing, but bald. <laughs> oh, man, I never really knew you had such a, an obsession with uh, looking at uh, men's hair. I just don't understand how you have none and then you have some. It's not how it goes. It goes the other way around. I had some. Now I have less. That's how it goes with age. But anyway, enough about that. Drive to survive is coming. I mean, I can't tell you how excited I am. My wife and I, she, she's agreed to watch with me. Uh, I've blocked some of my afternoon calendar, March 11th, March 11th, Friday, March 11th, drive to survive. It'll be, I am so excited, so excited. Two o'clock, I have my last meeting. I'll give myself an hour to finish up uh, some work. And then I plan on sitting in front of the television until people yell at me um, and watching as much as I can. So uh, I'm, I'm really excited. Some people have seen some early uh, previews and they say it looks great. So like everyone... Netflix, if you don't subscribe to Netflix, make sure to borrow your friend's passwords Friday, March 11th. Yeah, and I took a look online. The uh, the episode summaries are kind of already out there. They can tell you what's coming in each episode. So I kind of did a quick flick through that because... I mean, they wouldn't have known how the season was going to end, so there was no way they could have maybe made it to Lewis and Max title fight all the way through. But I was really happy to see that it looks like a nice varied set of uh, focus per episode. And I'm on target... Uh, where are we now? Sunday. I'm on target to get through all three seasons before the fourth one starts again wow. on, a, on a rewatch. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I I haven't um, seen one in a bit. I mean, I, I watched, you know, watch them as you go, but uh, I'm just, I'm so excited. I mean, I'm so excited. And we will have here on the dirty side of the track, we will have a recap of it for our next pod. So we will make sure not to give spoilers. We'll do our best to be careful if you haven't seen them all. But our anticipation is we will have watched them all when we record the next pod. So very, very exciting. And as we mentioned, cars on track, uh, you know, in an official test around the corner, we have Bahrain. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 
And t- Rob, do you have the times right in the notes here? Is that correct? I don't know. I was looking at the um, the Formula One app on my phone. When you go in and look at the schedule, it lets you flick on the kind of track time, my time options. And I've got it signed up for EST and, and, I, and I clicked on it and it said two till 11. I was like, that can't be right. But they are further forward than us than the UK who are five hours ahead. So um, they're another kind of three on top of that, I think. So yeah, I think it's 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 an early shift. <laughs> AM, what you didn't, what you failed to mention is two to eleven AM Eastern oh, yeah. time. Yeah, 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 yeah. AM, AM. So for me that's, in Central, that's one to ten in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Two AM here is what it's uh, seven AM in the UK, which I think put another couple of maybe three on top is like say mid morning Bahrain. So yeah, yeah. Oh. All I'm I mean, going to say I, is I'm not going to be watching the opening few laps. I think, you know, if it runs for those six hours, I might join them after they come back from lunch. <laughs> yeah, I've got uh, I've got a little bit of work I got to do those days, but I definitely will be tuning in Saturday to some laps. And uh, who knows, maybe I stay up Friday night and uh, turn the corner and catch the 1 a.m. kickoff central time. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's worth it. It's worth it. Come on. Oh, it is because the big time, the big difference this time for anybody that didn't realize was that, um, so last week in, um, Barcelona was whatever they called it shakedown. I mean, we like, like, like pit lane Paul said it, it was, it was testing, but it wasn't allowed to be called testing. There was no live streaming of it. And we just got to kind of get these little snippets that teams had filmed and put on social media. Whereas this time around it's full on live TV coverage, which makes it feel much more real um because if you know if i'm not stupid enough to get up at that time in the morning it'll always be there on demand and i can go watch that again so it will be great to just properly see the whole thing rather than these little feeder pieces that the teams have wanted to show you oh here's a little clip of porpoising no i want to watch all the porpoising (laughs) i want a feed of every what i want is the the mega cast where like, do you ever see that for football, especially college football? They'll give you like all the angles of all the cameras and they'll show you it the whole time. I want every corner of Bahrain live streamed into my house. I wanted to sit there and enjoy the whole thing. I am so excited that we're back. I mean, oh boy. Yeah, one of the things I'd be, I don't, well, I'm sure my untrained eye won't be able to spot it, but there was already um, something put out by the FIA that said they're going to be on the watch out for upgrades that are not in the spirit of the regulations and what does that mean I, I don't know i mean this kind of goes back to um when when paul was talking about are they cheating when they try to push the envelope of these new upgrades they put on and yeah they're probably sometimes putting things on that they suspect are going to get banned or they're going to get told to remove but if they get away with it then then great but i don't like the phrase not in the spirit because surely something is either compliant with the regulations or it isn't. It's not like looking at something and going, well, I mean, technically it's allowed, but it's not in the spirit. I mean, <laughs> well, it's like how the race director has the discretion to make any rules he likes, he or she likes up on the spot. Like, what is that? <laughs> now, the, the other thing, though, is that they're actually saying that the area they're most concerned about is, um, have, you, have you heard them talking about this flexi floor? No. Where, okay, so we're getting the the ground effect this year, but we're not getting the full on ground effect of um, the eighties or whenever, where you had side skirts on the car. So you kind of almost making like a seal to the floor and really making a kind of almost uh, vortex underneath the car. That was kind of like a a Dyson Hoover. That's really sucking you down because you're almost sealing in the sides. And they've said this year, there aren't going to be any um, side skirts. So there's still going to be kind of like the airflow, but they're talking about how some teams might be designing pieces of the floor that will actually flex as the car accelerates to almost kind of curve down and kind of maybe start creating like a pseudo skirt but I'm like I don't think until oh who was it who flipped on it was in Monaco when he went up against the the barrier and we saw the underside of the car because it was a real slow motion crash it was it button when he someone went over his wheel and the car just went up and kind of oh yeah against the barrier I, I, I think it was tunnel. I know who you're talking about when he kind of and, turned sideways yeah yeah and it wasn't a spectacular crash but the reason that one sticks in my head is that I remember looking at the underside of an F1 car and thinking how plain and boring and low tech does the underside of an F1 car look like you know, the top surfaces are all these hyper aerodynamic structures and, and polished and shiny and this thing went up on its side I'm like huh well you don't see the underside of a car you just don't. So 
if people are doing things, are we going to find not be finding things out until the scrutineers have had a chance to get all around and underneath these guys? No, no kind of um, spies down the pit lane are really going to be able to walk along and kind of just sort of subtly get underneath the other person's car and have a look at what's going under there because. Like you, you can see them as they were all walking around the uh, the paddock. They kind of, oh, what's that? What, what are they doing with their side pods? Or what's that thing they've got on the back? Because anything <laughs> that's on the upper side of the car is visible, right? Inspector Seb is going to be walking around, <laughs> checking it out closely. I mean, I'm curious to see in the testing how much real performance we actually see and how much sandbagging occurs. I mean, even during race weeks, I always feel like during practice, teams hold back quite a bit. Um, and you really don't know what you know until... Uh, qualifying. And so there's a very real chance we'll learn a bit more in testing. And then I think we'll, we may have to wait one more week until qualifying occurs till we really know what cars are totally fully capable of. But let's, I thought it'd be good if we kind of got pit lane Paul's perspective on, on, on what's happening uh, on the way to Bahrain here. Hey guys. So quick update. Uh, I fly to Bahrain tomorrow. So um Back to it, back to the grind, as I say. Um, it's been an interesting week for Formula One with the, obviously the big news uh, being the Mazapan and Haas story, and then obviously the Russia Grand Prix being dropped. Which you know, I don't think I don't think they have much choice on that, considering what's going on in the world. So yeah, it's been a bit of a um, a predictable week, um, let's say. As for as for next week, yeah, we got some more testing in Bahrain. I think with Bahrain, you're gonna see some more realistic um, lap times. I think from people, um, and it will it, it will be interesting because the teams who had the issues in Barcelona, they've had the chance to fix them, send equipment out to Bahrain now. So um, it'll be interesting to see who gets closer to the guys at the front. Like I said last week, Mercedes and Red Bull undeniably look strong they're gonna look strong i think it's fairly obvious that they are going to be strong that's the reason that the top two teams but it will be interesting to see what happens down in the midfield so it's going to be a fascinating week um will we really know you're going to have a good idea by the end of this week because people they will be doing their their, their fast realistic runs of course you might have teams who are going to Please the sponsors, let's say, by setting lightning quick times on no fuel and no car weight and high engine modes, whatever. But yeah, the reality is you're going to have a good idea uh, at the end of the test. And then we know a week later we'll be qualifying for Bahrain and you'll you'll be somewhere near where teams are going to be. So it's going to be a good week. It's going to be fascinating. Um I'll, of course, update you next weekend on the end of the test on things I found um, and then give you a bit of a insight to the wonderful country of Bahrain. So good to speak to you and speak soon. As always, a big thanks to Pitlane Paul. Uh, I mean, I'm so excited. I mean, how, how many startup podcasts have embedded journalists <laughs> on the pit lane? I mean, do you realize how expensive that would be for most podcasts? Whoa, whoa, but whoa, we whoa. we have unlimited resources. We're sharing <laughs> all of the current revenue with Paul, which is zero dollars. And uh, we'll stop you, doing that. Once we make a dollar, though, we're stopping the sharing. You, you, you've got to be really careful here because um, now you've badged him as a journalist uh, and you've set the seed about how expensive this would be. Um, I don't want to see some kind of Venmo request come through accompanying next week's <laughs> clip. <laughs> oh, happy to release. Like I, like I said, happy to we'll do profit sharing and uh, until we make money and then it stops. <laughs> I just want to drill into a couple of things he said, because um, I was thinking that we're likely to see some quick times per team, even if they only do it a little bit, because they've, they've got to try to understand their setups of how the cars can go on under quick conditions ready for qualifying. Right. So I know you said, you know, we maybe will, we won't know until qualifying. I think we must know something because they can't risk not doing um, those fast laps. What I hadn't taken into consideration was one of the things that he mentioned in there was we might see some lightning fast laps to keep the sponsors happy. I'm like, seriously, does that go on then? That you just so that the the sponsors can have a big smile on their face and have a few beers and some bragging rights, they'll go and run a car with like zero weight, no fuel and, and put in a lightning lap just so that the guys in suits can be uh, <laughs> all well, happy. It's 
And during testing, and forgive me if I'm mistaken, but can't you open the DRS flap whenever you want, basically, as long as you're not on the brake? Um, yeah, I think or so. is it? Yeah, I think it is. I, I don't think you have to be in a DRS zone, nor a second behind or under a second behind the car in front of you. So I think you, at the very least, you don't have to be behind a car in front of you. I know that for a fact. I just don't know if you're on a p- portion of the track that has enough straight line area where you can pop the the flap for you know a, a millisecond to gain an extra couple miles an hour. And like Paul said, go out there and in, in crazy you know Q3 trim with no fuel on softs and just do it high engine mode and try to turn it on real fast and see what you can do. But it'll be, it'll be interesting. But even when they've got, um, even when they're set up like that, that should mean then that, okay, we won't know that they're going to be able to keep that pace for an entire race. So we don't know it's race pace, but I think it's going to be really interesting. I'm going to be looking out for, especially someone like Haas. Right. When they go out and set their lightning lap, if their lightning lap is no faster than me in full race trim on my lawnmower going around. Uh, I, can get some, I can get some decent speed up going around my yard. Um, if they're not going to be able to give me a run for my money, then the dream of them maybe having a good season doesn't look as likely. But you know what? If one of those kind of lower to midfield teams goes in and throws some real stonking hot laps, then, okay, yeah, they might not be able to keep that up for a race weekend or a race duration. But the very fact they can get that high... I'd love to see some kind of cat amongst the pigeons uh, come through in uh, testing. I think we need to try to get a dirty side of the track sticker on the back of a Haas car at some point, considering it's an American <laughs> car, an American team, and we're an American Formula One podcast on. Uh, the wheels are turning. The wheels oh, are turning. And the wheels are turning that you get that printed out and shipped to Paul. All he's got to do is take a little kind of stroll down the pit lane and just slap that on the back of the car when no one's looking. Yeah, no I'm one sure we wouldn't, get, we wouldn't get into any trouble whatsoever. <laughs> None. Um, yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit about one of the, the more exciting parts for me of the upcoming season. I always love doing fantasy sports. I've been doing, I think I mentioned this before, fantasy basketball with my friends from college. Um, yes, there was internet. No, there were no real-time stats. So it was a little bit of both. But I've been doing it forever. And I love fantasy football. And I played baseball and hockey. And my, I even got my wife into fantasy a little bit. She did a um, a fantasy fashion league. I'm not going to explain what that is because it was ridiculous. But so um, one of the things that we at the dirty side, I know <laughs> you sorry, sorry. I, yeah, fant- <laughs> fantasy fashion. Mm, yes. And so moving on. And so the- <laughs> <laughs> I did, I once did, I once did in, cause we were kind of obsessed in, in the office uh, when I was back in the UK, we were obsessed with fantasy sport and we did uh, football <coughs> soccer uh, throughout kind of the main season. And then when that was over, we were kind of like looking for anything. We did fantasy Olympics. Uh, we did a number of different fantasy things. The, the lowest we ever sank was we did fantasy snooker once. Now snooker is not a big sport in the, in the U S it's, it's pool, but with different colored balls. Uh, yeah, and, I'm familiar um, with pool, but not so much the snooker version. Bigger table, pop yeah. as many balls as you can. You don't need to worry about it. But that was pretty much dredging the barrel as far as fantasy sports go, I thought, until I just heard about fantasy fashion. Oh, yeah, it was ridiculous. Um, I had actually, I, had a, I was once in a fantasy golf league for many years, and the, the commissioner, my friend in Vegas, took it incredibly seriously. And he would like, I mean, he always won and he just took everyone's money. And I eventually said, thanks, Bart, but I'm out. Uh, Anyway, so Fantasy Formula, it is open. We are so excited that Fantasy Formula is open on F1. Please check our socials for the link uh, and the code to find the league. Dirty side of the track. It's out there. Um, We'd love to have you join. And so a couple things, right? So one, we're going to give away a prize for uh, the first half uh, champion. So it's cumulative, right? You can have a good race and a bad race. Everyone can have those, but it's cumulative through time. So the first half at what I call summer break for those in the southern part of the, the globe, winter break, um, we will we will give away uh, some merchandise at that point. And then for the overall champion at the end of the season, we will also provide a prize. Um, and we are very excited to do this. And we're going to have weekly shout outs to whomever uh, wins that week. We have, I think, 15 or 16 people kind of signed up already. Um, and that was just through blasting on social. But now we're talking about it here. Please join. Please find it on social. It will be fun. I mean, it's just it's going to be a good time. Let's not take it overly seriously. Um, I just, As long as I beat Rob, the rest is all gravy. <laughs> Um, and you guys are probably beat both of us regularly. And, and I would just say, speaking over Twitter with uh, one of our one of our uh, dirty side listeners, 
they said, man, I was so excited. I got five drivers. I, th- I, was, I thought I was in great shape. And then I forgot I had to add a constructor. And they're like, <laughs> crap, I had the gold team. And then all of a sudden I had to wedge a constructor in. And so let's do a quick kind of recap on, on uh, at least at a high level on how, how it works. And I'll just, I'll, I'll frame it. And then Rob, I'll let you take it. And so the framing is, as mentioned, you, get f- you have to pick five drivers and you have a hundred, $100 million budget. The $100 million is not associated to anything in real life. They've just come up with $100 million. It's a round number. And each driver has a value. And the values are relative, I think, pretty strongly to the performance we've seen out of the drivers. Um, So you have to find five drivers and a constructor that fit in that $100 million. What's cool is throughout the year, as people perform better, their value goes up. So you actually increase your a hundred million dollars, you can end up having more money than that in your bank. And you could actually sell a driver, you know, change them and get someone else if you wanted um, by growing and riding people who have had success. I think I joked last year, I finished at about 104 million. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but that was a lot of appreciation to work throughout the year to, to do that as because I mean, others go down. So it's not as though it's all going up. Yeah. I did notice, I did notice when I was picking mine, um, actually just before I carry on on this, just to, just to shout out as well, that, um, it's fair to say the website is struggling a little bit at the moment. Yes. I, think there's, I think there's been a huge influx of people wanting to start up. My my first team that I set up, um, it kind of got corrupted. I couldn't even rename it. And then I accidentally en- edited it in, entered it into our league and we couldn't get it out of there for a while. We had that ghost team in there for a while. But if you have any problems, just please persevere on there. But what I did notice when I was selecting mine was, oh, they're clever. They're clever with the values of the drivers where you're like, okay, I'm just going to tweak this, I'm going to tweak this, that's going to free up a million or so there. So, okay, I did have nine uh, available, but if I just shuffle this around, now I've got 10. Who can I afford for 10? Oh, dang it, the next one's 10.5. They've they've, they've structured it very cleverly. So, um, but I think I'm I'm happy with uh, my lineup at the moment. We'll see. Like I said, I, like, well, like you said, really the main competition here is between you and me. I don't care if we're the bottom two in the league and everyone else absolutely destroys us. As long as the name Brian is below the name Rob, I will be very, very happy. I mean, I anticipate most of the listeners doing better than us. Like, like, so don't, don't, yeah, I don't, for everyone listening, uh, and when you beat us and you start grandstanding, we'll be like, yeah. So, (laughs) um, but I would say invite your friends, right. You know, when you join the league, see how badly you can beat Rob. I'm assuming all of us will beat Rob and then, you know, add a friend or two of yours and see how you do against them. It's free. Uh, Worst case scenario is you are amazing at it and you win some prizes or at least win a week and get a shout out. Uh, Best case scenario, uh, Rob finishes dead last. So, I mean, I think we have a lot to play for. This is going to be fantastic. And the scoring is bonkers. So we talked a little about the team selection and the constructor selection, Rob, you want to hit some of your favorite points because it is absolutely insane. I'll give you my summary at the end. It's one line on how I'm doing it. <laughs> I made the mistake of going and looking at the scoring first so that I could come up with my tactics on how to pick drivers. And um, I think I graduate with my PhD in scoring in about another year's time <laughs> because there was a lot to get through. But I'm not going to read it all out. You can go to the uh, the fantasy website. But what I did like was I hadn't really paid any attention. I think we played it once on in uh, Abu Dhabi, me versus you last year. And I, I just kind of threw a team together and didn't pay any attention. But now I've kind of taken a look at it. Yeah, you got obviously you get the points associated with doing well in qualifying and uh, the race itself. But what I do like is... Um, I like the idea of these streaks where if your uh, driver does kind of uh, well, say five times in a row, then they'll actually get these bonus streak points. So I think it's uh, there's a qualifies in the top 10 for five qualifying sessions in a row, finishes in the top 10 of a race for five races in a row and blah, blah, blah. There's these, these streaks. And I kind of I think, well, that's pretty cool because some of your lower end drivers that maybe aren't going to win the races and get you points. Well, if they do maybe manage to just like get into 10th. 10th spot five times in a row and I get some Billy bonus points in my back pocket. So, Oh, the streaks are the worst part, man. You're doing it <laughs> wrong. Who cares? <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, it's, you shouldn't, it shouldn't matter. It should be improvements or so. I don't know. It's too complicated. Like it's just too much for me. I get there's a, there's points for out qualifying and out doing your teammate or actually, and then improving on your spot. When you start low, if you improve, there's points for improving your position from start to finish. That all makes sense. But to me, the meat is where you finish, which are a lot of points associated with that, how you qualify, a lot of points associated with that. 
Um, and do you, do you finish? There's a penalty for not finishing. So I love just the meat and potatoes. And the way I look at it is pick the best drivers you can. <laughs> I mean, well, I know that sounds <laughs> obvious, but like we all have favorites. I'm not, I'm not going to sit there and debate between, you know, Lance Stroll and Pierre Gasly because I'm, I think one of them is coming on a hotter streak or may have qualified. No, man, I'm just, I'm going to think if Pierre's better in qualifying, I'm going to get some points that way. If Alpha Tauris are better on faster tracks or maybe better on slower tracks with the downforce, then I'm going to go with them there. But that's about as much as I'm going to read into it. So Rob's taking the mad scientist approach. <laughs> I'm taking the, uh, you know, who's good in my mind approach and we'll see how it works. No, no, you see, you, you didn't let me finish my story. So that's how I went into doing it. So I kind of tried to do the mad scientist thing, right? It was um, whenever we used to do the fantasy football um, back in the office, it was kind of like, I'd be studying, trying to find that unknown player who might suck, but actually he takes all the penalty kicks for the team. So he's going to score me some goals, even if he's a terrible player. However, after doing all of this research, points based first and looking at streaks and looking at blah, 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 and trying to work out, well, you get you get quite a, um, what do you get? Minus 10 points if you don't finish the race. So I'm kind of thinking, well, who's got the best reliability? Who's likely to spin out? You know, Mazda, at the time Mazepin was still in, I'm like, I'm definitely not having you. Um, <laughs> and then you start picking your drivers and then it all goes out the window because you obviously go and pick one of the best drivers. Once you've picked one of the uh, either Lewis or Max, if you decide you're going to go for one of those two and almost why wouldn't you, then it eats so much of your budget up that you're instantly down to only one of three or four drivers, your second driver. And once you pick somebody from that tier, well, now you're just doing everything possible to not pick Mazepan. <laughs> it was kind of like, I'm like, why did I waste all that time researching the points? It's, it's, this is very budget based and you're going to have to get lucky. Um, and I think you're, the other piece that I hadn't appreciated when, when we did it back for Abu Dhabi is you might know this more than me playing it last year. I think the way you decide to play your turbo driver is probably going to be the way that you get a big influx of points. If you get lucky and get it, make the right call. Yeah. So let's explain those couple things. This is, the, this is the part in my mind that actually you do need to pay attention to. There are three things. One, substitutions. You get three free substitutions a week. After the third, it costs you points. So it'll actually reduce your score by 10 points for each additional substitution. So be careful on, on your team. Don't pick you know a, a roster this week and say, oh, I'll change it all for next week. You're going to go in 30 points down from everybody else. Now, there is a subs bank where you can replenish your substitutions once or twice a year. I think it's in each half where you get a free free refill of subs, but that's you know that's you can only use that so often. So be careful on your subs. You get three free ones. Number two is the turbo driver, Rob just mentioned. Anybody under $20 million, so basically, um, I think it's Max and Lewis, and I don't have my internet open right now as we're recording this. I can't remember if George is, is above 20. Checo was just under before. So I used Checo a lot last year. Um, but you get double points for the turbo driver. So any, anyone under 20, you can choose them each week. You can change it however you like. There's no penalty for changing your turbo driver. $20 million and under, you get double points. And then once in each half, there's the mega bonus, mega bonus. And so the mega bonus is a three times multiplier for that driver that week. You only get one in each half. And just to be abundantly clear, the one week Rob played last year, he used the mega bonus, which he should have, and he still lost by three points to me. And I'd already used my mega bonus much earlier. So he pulled out all the stops and still couldn't uh, still couldn't make it happen. So those are the three things that I think we all can kind of understand and get our arms around. Pick the best driver you can, watch the subs, use your turbo wisely, and uh, save your mega bonus for when you need it. I, I may actually save my mega bonus for a track where I feel strongly about a particular driver and just go all in so that I can uh, shout myself out one week, possibly. Probably not, but you never know. That's going to get banned. You're not allowed. Even if you win, you can't shout yourself out. Like, what? We'll just have, we'll, what we'll end up doing is we'll begrudgingly shout each other out. So if you like win one week, then it'll fall on me and I'll just kind of give you the minimum amount of kudos possible. I don't think no. you, can't, you can't shout yourself out. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Maybe that's how it worked in fantasy fashion, but not in F1. Man, I'm, not only will I shout myself out, I'll make a T-shirt, put it in the store, and I'll wear it. <laughs> Ooh, and that could be... I was kind of thinking whether there should be some kind of forfeit or upside for who wins out of me and you. Oh. Um, 
that you know we do get a t-shirt or something i have to get printed that like brian is god or something or something stupid or i i think actually i think that's brilliant i think that i think listeners i think we have a bet between rob and brian the person who loses for the year not a half we gotta i mean we're not made of money we're not cranking out t-shirts left and right here so let's say at the end of the season whichever of the two of us has the least points the other person gets to make a t-shirt and the winner uh, has to force the loser to wear it uh on a pod on something where we we see you see it and I already can see mine. It's going to promote dirty side of the track and it'll say, I'm the biggest loser on the back or something to that effect. No, no, no. It's going to be much worse than that. I mean, we'd have to keep away from profanities, but I think we can come up with something better than that. Yeah. Um, what I've also decided just to really up the ante as well is that as well as allowing the website to um, track the cumulative score between the two of us and decide who's the best from that way, um, I'm going to track us uh, separately on a spreadsheet for the head to head race by race week. So how many race wins do we have over each other? Because that might give a slightly different output as well, but I'm, I'm obviously going to crush you in both, but then it just gives me two ways of crushing you into the dust. Yeah. If you say so, uh, I don't think any of that is going to work, but uh, you know what I'm going to do every time. Uh, and, and by the way, the last thing you have to get your, your lineups in before qualifying starts. So just watch the timing of qualifying where you live, and where are the races? But every time, right before qualifying starts, I'm going to have a big bowl of porridge. I had some porridge. And Valtteri and I are going to, he's, I'm going to channel my inner Valtteri. I'm going to get naked. And I'm going to run <laughs> around, eat my porridge, and I'm going to put my team in. Uh, and then we, I'm going to just, I can't wait. I cannot wait. It's going to be fantastic. There'll be applauding. <laughs> the scores. I mean, I don't even have a SAP stat today. The SAP stat of the day is just... Just wait for the scoring between Brian and Rob. It's going to be tremendous. Now, at this point, I've built it up. When I lose, it'll be embarrassing. And when I win, it'll be ridiculous because I talked about it too much. So I've already screwed up. And uh, you, already, you already did the kind of the call to arms to get, try and get people to sign up. What I would also say on top of that is um, even if you've got friends that don't listen to us, um, I mean, A, why not? Why haven't you passed the pod and uh, and got some more listeners for us? But if you just got play, uh, friends that like F1 but don't listen to podcasts, that doesn't matter. Dirty side will take anybody. We're trying to get this league as big as we can kind of get it. So they don't have to be listeners. Uh, share it around. If you enter, make sure you get two or three of your buddies to enter as well. If we could kind of get... I think it'd be nice. We can get like north of 50 driver teams in there, but yeah, 50? I don't think we're going to get there. We've got 15 already and we haven't even talked to anybody about it. We I was looking for 30. That. I was double. hoping for 30. Wow. You know, that's your little small minded view of the world, isn't it, Brian? You got to go big or go home. <laughs> I, I guess so. Apparently, man, no, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. If we can get somewhere between 30 and 50 teams, it'll be great. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Actually, you know what? All right, I'll send it to my bowling league because I know those guys would love to beat me at something I care a lot about and a lot of them care nothing about. And then they can talk a lot of trash. There we are. Yeah. All right. Um, so moving on, uh, one of the things we said we were going to do and started last week with uh, listener Paul from Detroit is, you know, kind of get to know some of the dirty side or the dirty siders, the dirty side listeners. And we are so appreciative of all of you who listen in every week and talk to your friends and family about why aren't they listening to the dirty side. Um, but what we're going to do is, is, as I said, keep highlighting listeners. And, and Rob, I'm going to turn it to you uh, for our next 100 seconds of DRS. Okay, well, uh, this week we've got another listener that's coming on to do the 100 seconds of DRS. And uh, no offense to the two pools that we've had so far, but this one's even more exciting because it's somebody that actually neither me or uh, Brian know. Uh, and is actually our first ever official fan to really start following us on Facebook and Twitter. So I'd like to welcome all the way from Australia, Mark. How you doing, Mark? Uh, good, Rob. Yourself? Yeah, good, thanks. It's, uh, what time is it right now for you in Australia? Uh, logged on at 6.30 in the morning, so it's still dark on a Sunday morning over here. Oh, wow. It's Sunday and it's Saturday for me and Brian. This is a bit strange, but okay. <laughs> so uh, how long have you, uh, you been following Formula One? Uh, off and on, quite a long time. Um, probably back into the, uh, into the late 80s, early 90s, where I um, was really following Formula One. However, I did have a bit of a hiatus when... Uh, we had that procession time where there wasn't a lot of competition in Formula One, but um, after last year, I'm I'm really excited about 2022. 
Nice, nice. Yeah, and I think, well, Brian, you did the same kind of thing, didn't you? Didn't you kind of have a little hiatus uh, along the way? I did. Schumacher and everybody really got me in. And then, um, quite honestly, I went to college and time was precious and I kind of lost track. <laughs> um, and I got back, though, in the early 2000s. So late, mid, to, mid, late 2000s. Right. OK, but the reason we're here is to do the, uh, the 100 seconds of DRS and uh, which you've signed up for, Mark, and Brian's turn to ask the questions. I'm on the timer. Um, I don't think we've quite hit the 100 seconds correctly. yet. I screwed up the first week and only did 90 seconds. Uh, Brian did about, uh, I think we did 95 last week. So not only are you going to be the first person to do this that isn't a friend of me or Brian, you might actually be the first person to have 100 seconds as well. So um, are you ready, Mark? Well, I don't know whether that's a good or a bad thing, but let's go. <laughs> you ready, Brian? Uh, I would just say that last week when we had um, non-pit lane, Paul, I had catastrophic earphone failure. So let's hope that doesn't happen this time. Um, not, I am ready. I'm, I'm not hooking my phone up to my earphones, Brian. So we will uh, we'll avoid that one. So I'm going to count you in three, two, one, and then I'm going to set the old timer off and it'll be over to you guys. So three, two, one, go. Mark, best F1 driver on the grid currently. I'd have to say Verstappen, but definitely not my favourite. Who is your favourite F1 driver on the grid currently? Obviously, Ricardo. If <laughs> Shuey or not to Shuey? Oh, definitely to Shuey. It is definitely to Shuey. <laughs> if you were in a superhero movie, would you be the hero or the villain? The hero? What is your favourite food? Uh, spaghetti bolognese. Very nice. What's my favorite food? Ooh, I have absolutely no idea. That is also correct. Uh, um, best F1 driver of all time. was the answer last week. Uh, best one, uh, Schumacher. Uh, you can drive in the hill. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yes. What is your favorite country to visit? Uh, the UK. Beautiful. Um, another fill in the blank here that I, I want to highlight. I will tell blank people about the Dirty Side of the Track podcast. Uh, lots of people. Yeah. Favorite livery on the 2022 cars so far? McLaren. What's your least favorite errand or chore to do? Uh, painting. Huh. First memory of F1? Uh, ooh, that's a good one. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, like I said, back in the back in the late eighties. Uh, pass. <laughs> Favorite non-motorsport sport. sport. Uh, AFL or rugby league. Done. All right, that's it. That is one hundred seconds. Well done. That went super fast. Was that one hundred seconds? Um, yeah, I think is one that... minute is one minute forty. One hundred seconds. Wow. Yes. We may have to make this longer because I had so many more questions to get to know Mark, but we're going to keep it just kind of down the straight, rearing open. That was fantastic, Mark. Thank you so much. That's okay. We're going to we're going to have fun. to dig in we, we, before we let you go. We've got to dig into the uh, the late eighties past there. So uh, we, I could see that was a deer in the headlights. Then was the uh, too many things trying to process the first memory. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I suppose because uh, especially over Christmas, um, I've been. Uh, into the old, uh, into the Formula One YouTube uh, channels and just watching a whole lot of old, uh, old stuff over YouTube. All that sort of stuff was coming up and I went, oh, oh I wasn't even alive then. Uh, <laughs> do, you, do you know what? Exactly the same thing is kind of hitting me that when I wrote that question, I put it in there. I was like, because when we do these shows and we've been researching and kind of going back to the record books and looking at stuff to either when I was watching it, but I've probably learned more like, looking into the Senna crash more than I actually remember it happening at the time or when we've done like Jim Clark wasn't even alive then so I yeah. probably wouldn't be able to answer that question either I, I actually went last week I do uh FaceTimes with family and and with my in-laws I walked on and we had just finished the Nicky Lauda recording and they were talking somehow for some reason about the Roman Grosjean crash from Bahrain in 2020. And I mentioned Nikki Lauda and then I couldn't stop telling stories. I'm talking about Lauda air and I'm talking about the crash and his investigation. And my in-laws are like, yeah, we don't care. So <laughs> just th from things before our time, but memories and watching old stuff, it really kind of spurred a spurred a thought. So, yeah, um, sure. so thanks so much for your time. 
uh, Mark, and, and it really is appreciated that we've actually got real people out there that are listening. And uh, Mark is not a paid actor. He's an actual real person that listens to the show and uh, volunteered to come on here. Um, so, yeah, thanks again for your time, Mark. It's brilliant. That's OK. Thanks for having me on, guys. Anytime. We appreciate it. And if anyone else is interested in doing 100 seconds of DRS, please always let us know on Twitter. Mark, have a wonderful day. Thanks so much. I'd echo that, Brian. It was great to uh, speak to Mark. Um, I still find I still find it a little bit strange that we've got people out there that are listening that are not related to us or friends that we forced to listen to this. Um, so that was that was super cool. Um, we've got another one in the bank uh, for next week. We recorded another one as well, and it's just it's just been great to uh, talk to these guys. So please, please, please uh, sign up, uh, Brian. You've put it out there, haven't you? The how to sign up for the hundred seconds. I have, yeah. Just send a, a tweet to at F One Dirty Side, or just send us a DM, a tweet, whatever works for you. Uh, let us know. I will get back to you. I, I'm the social media manager for Twitter. And so I will, uh, I'm putting that on my resume. Uh, <laughs> and so, and so I'll get back to you and we'll set it up like we did with Mark. And next week we'll be talking to Lee. And I would just say that my favorite part, and we were fortunate we had a little extra time, um, but just chatting with these two folks uh, afterwards, after the recording stopped, but just about their views on F1, kind of, you know, what we can do better and, and just sitting there talking about F1, like, you know, a handful of people sitting at a, a bar having a beer and, and having a laugh. And so uh, I couldn't be more appreciative to Mark for recording that and listening. And then next week, the same feeling I'll mention for, for Lee. Just awesome, awesome, awesome. Yep. And uh, this time next week when we talk, we'll uh, be talking after witnessing uh, testing in Bahrain and we will be looking forward to race week. A real race week or Rawi Kik. You familiar with that? What is that? That's just noise. No. Ferrari once put out a race week thing, but they made it R-A-C-E, the C-E under the R-A, and then the W-E-E-K, E-E-K under the W-E, and it was Rowy Keek. <laughs> and so, no, uh, come on, man. You're not, you don't know all the, all the uh, little memes about Ferrari posts on social media. Apparently, it's just me. Um, so, yeah, we're one week away from Rowy Keek. I <laughs> I can't even pronounce that, but apparently we are one week away from what Brian just said. So um, please listen, share, enter the uh, Fantasy League. And uh, thanks for listening again. And we will catch you next week. Take care, everybody. Be well, be safe. Talk to you soon.